Happy Friday, everyone. It is me, Beverly Adams, your A&R Program Assistant for the UGA Extension Office here in Forsyth County with my pest of the week, tree squirrels. Tree squirrels are members of the rodent family. They include the Eastern Gray Squirrel and the Southern Flying Squirrel. These species are located all throughout most of the Eastern United States and are found in all suitable habitats here in Georgia. In Georgia, the Eastern Gray Squirrels are considered game animals. There is a closed season for harvest for them that begins in August and it runs through February. It has a bag limit of 12 per day. There is no open season for the Eastern, I'm sorry, for the Southern Flying Squirrel and all non-game wildlife in Georgia is protected. Identification, Eastern Gray Squirrels weigh between 0.75 and 1.5 pounds. They have a bushy tail and grayish um, brown fur and a white underbelly. The Southern Flying Squirrel is the smallest tree squirrel weighing about 2.5 ounces. It has pale brown fur and a white underbelly. It has furred membranes along its body, which are pale gray in color. Um, and you'll often see or hear the reason they're called flying squirrels is because of those membranes when they expand off and jump or fly um, with all four feet, um, it looks like wings. Um, the southern flying squirrel is nocturnal, which means that it stays awake at night and sleeps during the day. Habitat, reproduction, feeding, damage, and disease. Um, these species like to live in oak hickory forest as well as mixed forest of pine and hardwood and in suburban environments where large trees are present. The gray squirrel reaches sexual maturity at one year old. They breed twice per year from December to January and again in June. The gestation period is 42 to 45 days. They have an average of three babies per litter. They prefer cavities in trees as nesting sites. Their, born, their young are born hairless, blind, and their ears are closed. And at 10 to 12 weeks, they wean them. The flying squirrel, it breeds once or twice per year, and they have two to four um, babies per litter. Again, they prefer tree cavities for nesting, but they'll also use bird houses um, for that as well. Squirrels feed on items rich in carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. They feed on hard mast during the fall and early winter, and they often hoard that food for later use. During late winter and early spring, tree buds are their preferred food. In summer, they feed on soft mast items such as fruits and berries. They also are opportunists, and they will feed on foods such as corn, cultivated fruit, and feed placed by humans to attract wildlife such as birds. Southern flying squirrels will also feed on bird eggs, insects, and other animal matter. Tree squirrels can cause damage by chewing on structures, trees, and electric lines. They chew on siding to gain access to attics for nesting. They also chew um, on insulation and wires, and that can pose a fire hazard. Squirrels also chew bark from branches and trunks of trees, which can damage the trees. Squirrels can carry several diseases that can be potentially harmful to humans, such as Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, um, and Leptospirosis. They are also host for parasites such as fleas and bot flies. Habitat modifications such as trimming trees and limbs away to approximately six to eight feet from buildings um, are some good control um, things also supplying them with alternate food sources to deter them from causing damage at bird feeders. Um, you've seen the little um, bird or uh, squirrel feeders now that are they're like picnic tables and you set them out and put the bird feed on or the squirrel feed on there, something like that. Um, the most effective way of preventing tree and property damage is exclusion. So for trees, you would want to circle them with a two foot wide collar of metal six feet off the ground. Um, this can also be done for bird feeder poles and um, to prevent squirrels from traveling along wires, run wires through two foot sections of lightweight plastic pipe. Um, the pipe will rotate on the wire, causing the squirrels to fall when they try to travel across it. To prevent squirrels from entering attics and other parts of buildings, 
Openings um, can be closed off using 0.5 inch wire mesh. Um, you want to be sure no squirrels are inside once it's sealed off. If they are, use some traps to, um, to remove them. Um, there's also some taste um, repellents such as Repel um, that are on the market. Um, these can be applied to, or Repel can be applied to seeds, plants, siding, and outdoor furniture. Another taste repellent is Miller and it contains hot sauce. It can be applied to fruit trees and crops before the fruit or vegetable is on the plant. Another form of repellent is polybutanes. Um, this is a sticky substance that can be applied to outdoor structures like buildings or railings to discourage climbing. It sticks to the feet of the squirrel and deters them from returning to the area. No toxicants are currently registered for use on squirrels in Georgia. You can also use wire cage traps baited with apple slices, nuts, sunflower seeds, and peanut butter to capture squirrels alive and remove them from your home. You need to check the traps once in the morning and once in the evening um, just to make sure nothing is in there. And exclusion seems to be the best means to reduce damage. If that fails, lethal control may be necessary, but should only be used as a last resort. Mm. So that is my pest of the week, tree squirrels. I am Beverly Adams, the UGA Extension Office A&R Program Assistant here in Forsyth County. Here is our contact information. If you have any further agriculture questions or horticulture questions, please let us know. You can reach out to us through our email address. You can call um, our office. You can reach out through Facebook or our website. Um, we hope you all have a great weekend, and I'll be back next week with my beneficial pest of the week.